What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a really interesting video for you. So today's video revolves around server hosting. In this video, I'll be using a Minecraft server and a different computer to demonstrate exactly what we're doing. But of course, this works with absolutely any service you choose to run. As long as you've port forwarded properly and your firewalls are open, this will work as you're hoping. Basically, in today's video, I'll show you how you can take your IP address 192 whatever whatever and get yourself a nice looking domain that people can connect to, i.e. troubleshoot.nodns.com or something like that. And they simply punch that into their Minecraft game or a web app or something like that. And they get taken to your server instead of having to memorize all of those numbers. And it's especially useful if you have a dynamic IP address, meaning every night or so your IP address changes and you need to go ahead and push this new number to a bunch of different people. So with all of the explanation out of the way, how exactly do we get a custom address to replace our IP address when we want people to connect to a server we're hosting or something similar? Well, there's a very simple, easy to use, free website out there called NoDNS. Now, of course, you've probably run into the site before, but you may be a bit confused on where to start. This video will take you from the start to the finish, and I'll be demonstrating a Minecraft server running on my local home PC that I can connect to from another computer on a completely different network somewhere else across the world. So requirements for this video, obviously a service or something that people can connect to and look at to go ahead and test. Now, of course, you don't need one to get this to work, but I'll simply be using a Minecraft server. Meanwhile, yours could be basically anything. Next, you'll need to make sure that that service is properly port forwarded and your firewalls are open. I won't be going through that at all in this video, but there will be links down in the description below to super simple, super basic explanations on port forwarding and firewalls. And finally, hopefully you have an idea of what you want to call it because we'll need to enter a name later on, but of course, that's to come. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and start up my servers. For me, it's the latest Minecraft snapshot server for 1.16, which is release candidate 1. And I can go ahead and connect to this from my local PC by simply launching up the game, heading across to multiplayer, and adding my server as 127001. We can connect to it, and things work as expected. So, assuming that I'd like someone else to connect to my server, First of all, I have to go ahead and find out my IP. So for this, you'd usually head across to Google, what is my IP, and you'll get your IP back over here. Now, of course, I'll have to blur it, but assuming that this number changes every day or whatever, we want to go ahead and get a friendly address for this, such as google.com or something similar, just for an example. Well, it's actually rather simple. Linked below is this page over here, no IP. So we'll need an account on this website. In the very top right, simply go ahead and create yourself an account. I'm currently logged in as Technobo, and assuming that you've done that, we can go ahead and download the dynamic piece of software. Now, this is of course assuming that your IP address changes. If it doesn't change daily, then you probably don't need this, but it's still good to download anyway. It makes the process a whole lot easier. We'll be downloading the dynamic DNS update client Duck for Windows. I'll simply hit the big download now button in the link in the description down below. Then I'll simply click on it to open it, and then we'll simply follow through the installation. So I agree install, then simply make sure that both of these options are checked if you'd like the easiest, most seamless experience. For me, I'm only doing this once and I'll be uninstalling it once I'm done. But of course, leaving it to start as a system service, every time you start up your PC and your IP address has possibly changed, this will run and tell the servers where to point your web server to. Anyways, once we've done that, we'll be taken to this page over here. Simply go ahead and log in with the same account we created on the website. Of course, if you didn't create one, simply click sign up and follow through these steps on the page. I'll get a pop-up that looks something like this. Client ID, there are no hosts selected, and my IP address down at the very bottom. What exactly do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to go ahead and create ourselves something to forward to. So heading across to the third link in the description down below, we get to this page over here, Manage DNS Records. Making sure we're on the Create Hostname tab, we'll simply pick a server that we'd like from this list over here. Of course, the top ones over here on the list are paid. You need a paid plan, but at the very bottom, we have no IP free domains. I'll leave it as ddns.net. Then we'll simply type in a name over here. So I'll call it troubleshoot as such. And when we're done with this, the place that people will connect to will be troubleshoot.ddns.net, which is a lot more friendly than a bunch of numbers. And then we have this over here. Simply leave it as is, set to A. Then scrolling down, we have our IP address. We can assign it to a group, but I won't be doing that. And of course, we have some premium features. Then we have mail forwarding, which I won't be using either. Either way, I'll click add hostname. 
And now we have our server over here. Heading back to the updater over here, we'll click edit hosts. Then we'll simply check the box next to the website that we just created, which for me was troubleshoot.ddns.net. I'll click save. And as you can see, we've successfully updated as such. Then once we've done this and all of these are checked, you can of course click refresh now just to make sure things are working properly everything should be working as expected. I'll head across to my second PC over here, which is my laptop. We'll still be able to connect it locally, but some things will be a little bit different. I haven't closed my server once, simply because I don't actually need to do that. I'll go ahead and start up the game, head across to multiplayer, and I can connect to my server as 127001. As usual, I've joined the server through localhost. If I disconnect, head back to the menu over here and click add a server. I'll go ahead and enter troubleshoot.ddns.net which is the same address we saw in no IP. Then I'll hit done and you'll see in a moment that we can't connect to the server. Why is this? Well, because our computer is reaching out to this website and then coming back to itself and it's getting a bit confused. And if you're running your server on something that isn't port 25565, the default port, at the very end of this address, simply make sure to include a colon and enter 25565. Hit done and you should be able to connect to it if you're on an external PC. Assuming that you're still having issues connecting to it, head across to the next link in the description down below, which is the port check tool. That is this page over here. It says your IP address, and you simply just enter what port you wanna check over here. So 25565, check port. And as you can see, we get a green message, meaning that computers outside of our local network can connect to my Minecraft server using my external IP. So if I copy that external IP, add a server in Minecraft, paste it in, colon 25565, this is how people would usually connect to your server. And as you can see, there'll soon be an X as expected, just like this no DNS one up here. Because I'm on the same computer on the same network, things won't work as expected. If you want to connect to your server using a computer on the same local network, i.e. the same router, you'll need your local IP address. Start R, CMD, IP config, and we'll look for the way that we're connected to the internet. So mine is Ethernet adapter, and this is my local IP address, 192.168.1.20. What we'd do is on the second PC, add a server, would enter that address, colon 25565, and would hit done. This time, however, because I'm pointing to my own computer on the local network, I should be able to connect to it this way. So with all of these over here being our no IP address, our external IP address, and our internal local IP address, I'm gonna go ahead and do this exact same thing on my laptop. Though first of all, I'll get to naming them a bit friendlier. There we go, things make a bit more sense. So troubleshoot.ddns.net, my external IP address, and my local IP address. As you can see, I'm on my laptop over here, a completely different device, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to connect to a different place in South Africa, meaning that I'm possibly another user somewhere else in the world connecting to my local server on this network over here. What I'm doing is actually taking myself out of my local network and pretending to be someone else somewhere else across the world. So now that we're somewhere else, I'm gonna head across to multiplayer and I'll go ahead and add my server over here. So I'll click add server. And first of all, we'll add troubleshoot.ddns.net as such, and we'll click done. This time you should see a green icon. There we go. Then I'll go ahead and rename it just so it makes a bit more sense as such. Then I'll add my external IP address as such. And this one should also be green, but it's taking a bit longer. There we go. And add server, I'll add my local IP address over here as such, done. And all of these should then be green. There we go. So this top one over here is troubleshoot.ddns.net, the external one that we created now. This one over here is my external IP address, i.e. what we Googled for and what you'd usually give to other people. And this bottom one over here is my local IP address, 192.168.1.20. This is working over my local network. And these two over here are working through my VPN because I'm connected to them from a quote unquote different place across the globe. So I'll connect to troubleshoot.ddns.net. And of course, I'm logged in on both computers. Let me quickly relaunch the game and I'll go ahead and connect to troubleshoot.ddns.net. So I'll simply click the join button. This time my login should be valid. There we go. And we should be dropped into the server exactly where we left off, this time on a completely different device. Now I haven't got it working properly set up to work with my NVIDIA GPU in my laptop, so FPS are pretty trash. But besides that, I've successfully connected to my web server from somewhere else across the globe. Next up, if I were to go ahead and disconnect from my VPN, and basically connect back to my local network. I'm one router away from my main PC. You should see that if I head back into multiplayer, only this local one over here should work. 
and troubleshoot.dns as well as my external IP address shouldn't be working as you'd expect, just like my main desktop PC over here. So anyways, with all that aside, we've successfully taken our long IP address that changes often and set it to be troubleshoot.ddns.net. Now, of course, there are a bunch of different features with no IP, but I won't be covering them in this video. As long as this piece of software over here is running and starts up with your PC, no matter how often your IP address changes, every couple of minutes it should be updated and people across the globe can connect to that no IP domain that we just created. As for adding your own domain and things alike, that's up to you to figure out. But besides that, that's basically it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.